These days, a lot more people are becoming more conscious about their internet privacy and security. They've become aware that services such as Google and social media are using their data in some somewhat nefarious ways. Now, this video isn't discussing why you should become more conscious about privacy. I'm going to presume that if you were watching it, then you probably made up your own decision for why you think that is. However, what a lot of people don't realize is one of the things that they use on a daily basis, and in fact more so than, you know, their computer, is their phone. If you're using Android or, God for sake, iOS, there are a lot of trackers and underlying services that are still sending data to Google. Although there are ways to harden your privacy settings on Android, um, there are a lot of alternatives to Android that are not only open source, so we can verify the code, but also offer a lot more security and privacy features that you wouldn't normally have with Android. So as far as alternatives to Android go, the main one seems to be Lineage OS. It's the one that's been around for a while. It's the one that most people are familiar with. And it's an Android custom ROM that can be installed on nearly any Android phone, as long as it's new enough. Now, although Lineage OS is very easy to install and it can be installed on many different phones, uh, there are some security concerns about it. So it uses, it can be exploited with ADB, uh, which is just the Android debugger tool. Um, it uses user debug as a build. So there are a lot of debug modules that are installed on it, which can be exploited further. And it disables verified boots, so, you know, anyone can reinstall, like, an older OS and exploit it that way. But there are security concerns with Lineage OS, even though it is a great operating system and a great project, and I do recommend it if you have no other option. Another alternative that's more well-known is Graphene OS, which is very secure. Um, in fact, they prioritize security over everything to the point where it doesn't let you use Google Play services at all. On top of that, it's a bit slower and it doesn't really prioritize performance uh, over security. So it's not very usable for people that want to actually use certain Google Play services and stuff on their phone. So an alternative to both of these is Calyx OS. Now, Calyx OS is not only much more secure than Lineage OS, but it allows for Google Play services if you want it to be installed on your phone. So if you want to use something besides just Aurora, and due to the new installer that they have, it's actually very, very simple to install this on a Pixel phone. In fact, you can do it in under 10 minutes. For those of you who are not familiar with the Calyx Foundation, it was, in, it was actually started by this guy, Nicholas Merrill, um, who started a telecommunications company at first and basically fought back against a gag order that the FBI put on him. And he tried to single-handedly undermine the Patriot Act in America. So, yeah, this guy's done some stuff. And they are a really great foundation, and they do a lot of great work. And I do genuinely trust them in terms of prioritizing privacy and security for its users. So before we get started, it's probably important to understand that you can't actually install Calyx OS on every single Android device, unfortunately, unlike Lineage OS. The best phones to do this on are the Google Pixel phones. Um, ironically enough, Google phones are actually very simple to install these custom ROMs onto without using something like getting rid of the verifier boot or whatever. The one alternative you want a cheaper version is that you got the Xiaomi. Um, this phone is probably like the cheapest version, unless you want to use like an older version of the Pixel, like the Pixel 2 or 3. Uh, the Pixel 3 is still a fairly decent phone, and um, if you can pick one on second-hand or cheaply, then I would recommend it. But yeah, just verify that your phone can actually install Calyx OS on it. So yeah, once you've done that, just go to this link, it'll be in the description below, and download the image that you want for your specific phone. So it has to be the one that's correct for your specific phone. Um, I'm doing this on a Pixel 4a. So just download that and you should be good to go. So next you're going to want to get this flasher that they have. So if you've ever installed a custom ROM before, you might be familiar with using ADB and these Android debugger tools and all these various services that you need in order to install these custom ROMs on it. Um, this takes away the effort of doing all of that. 
Um, it's essentially one script that you run um, and it does everything automatically for you. So it's really, really handy and it lets you install it in under 10 minutes or so. So if you're on Mac OS or Windows, uh, I do not employ you on your life choices. But yeah, this will work the exact same as if you're using Linux. Um, just the only thing is if you are on Linux, you're going, or Windows, should I say, you're going to need to install this uh, Google's USB driver as well. But yeah, essentially just download this flasher for your specific project, for your specific platform, should I say, and you should be good to go. So once you have both of those uh, downloaded, I just created a folder here. So what you should have is a zip file, which just contains your image and all the various binaries and stuff inside it. Do not unzip this, keep it as it is, and just make sure that your flasher is in the exact same folder as your zip file. Now it can be in downloads with various other files as well, it doesn't matter, just as long as these two files are in the same folder, you should be good to go. So the next thing you're going to want to do is plug in your new Pixel phone, or if you're using a Xiaomi, plug that in as well, and just plug it into your phone. Um, now there's going to be some things that you're going to need to do um, on your phone itself in order to get it set up, but we'll talk about that now. So just run your uh, device driver like this. Now, I've been told that there was problems with the flasher before, uh, where you basically had to specify this flag image and point it to the actual file, but I didn't need to do that for me, so I don't know, it depends. If you do have that problem, there's some information in the GitHub repository. But yeah, just run this. Uh, and it's going to start extracting. So, this is the steps that you need to go through on your phone itself in order to prepare yourself. So you're going to want to take out your SIM card, make sure you're connected to a Wi-Fi network. Um, also, on top of that, it's probably best to make sure that you're at least a little bit of charge on your phone as well. So what you do is you enable the um, developer options, and what you do is you go into the settings, you go down to the about phone, and there's a section in the about phone called build number, and you basically just tap this a load of times. You tap that seven times. Um, after three or four times, I think, it comes up with a notification. Okay, if you tap this three more times, it'll go into developer mode. So don't do that unless you want that. But yeah, after that is the case, um, you can go into your settings again. You go into system, advanced, developer options. And in there, you can enable the USB debugging. So basically, it's just going to allow you to debug the phone via USB cable. And you're also going to want to enable the OEM unlocking as well. Um, another pro tip, um, if you are still in developer options after this, make sure you disable this because, you know, there could be some security concerns. But yeah, after all that is done, uh, you click enter and you should be good to go. Now, I haven't done this on my phone. So what has happened is I've done this already earlier today and I just realized that the previous tutorials and stuff that were out there were a little more complicated than the process actually should be. So what has happened was Calyx OS built this flasher tool and no one else really has picked up on it or has really like started talking about it. So I wanted to do this tutorial to show you how simple this actually is. But yeah, as soon as you do that, what's going to happen is, I'll just go into it, uh, Android, uh, fast boot screen. So yeah, essentially what's going to happen after you do this um, is your phone's going to kind of reboot and it's going to go into this fast boot menu. No, it actually isn't the fast boot menu, it's something else. But essentially all you're going to do is, and it's going to actually tell you on the screen, is you press the volume down or volume up button and you select the boot method. And essentially when you do this, it's going to flash the image and everything else onto your phone without having to use the ADB tool, which is very annoying if you've ever had to install a custom ROM before. But yeah, I'm not going to go through the steps of reinstalling it again because this is literally the hardest part of it. The next part is just literally following the steps, which is just, you know, press the down button on your phone, press start, and you're good to go. Now, once all that is set up, uh, there's some other bits of advice I suppose I can give you. 
Um, when you restart the phone, it's the exact same way as when you would restart the Pixel in the first place in that it asks you if there's certain settings you want. Do you want to change the time and date? Um, and also what it'll do is it'll ask you if um, it'll give you basically a big list of different software and stuff like that that you might want to pre-install. Um, I'm going to give you some advice here. So all of Calyx Linux's um, or Calyx OS, um, all of their services such as their VPN system, which is free to use, I believe, and a few of the other tools that they've created will be installed. And a lot of these are very good. Um, I really recommend a lot of the choice, like they picked out Signal, for example, and um, Chromium is something I don't think you should install. Me personally, I think the Firefox privacy focus browser is a lot better. Um, but yeah, there's just a few services that you can probably do without installing. And that's just my advice. So there's going to be like two or three other VPN services you don't need to install all of these. Uh, Calyx OS is good enough. Um, you don't need to install two different uh, password managers. If you know that you're not going to use a service, don't bother doing it. And that's my only advice, really. But yeah, once you go through this, um, literally it's just sitting back and waiting for it to be flashed onto your phone. And it really is that easy. Like It takes less than 10 minutes and you're good to go. But yeah, that's just a quick video uh, where I show you how to use Calyx OS. If you have any concerns or any problems you did when you were installing it, please let me know. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.